all right hello everyone and peace of christ all of you please invite your friends and if you have four wives please invite them if you have 60 kids eh, you know doesn't hurt and uh, i i have to invite some of my cousins so we can reach 100 fast and they told me the rest is coming the 300 so you can imagine so now let us go and talk about this funny debate you see there is there is something i don't like i, I don't think i'm talking negative about david wood but david wood is doing this debate in a very wrong way if you notice he always gave the opening to the muslims and the closing to the muslims i never heard of such a thing i mean he got the opening he got the clothing and he got the closing so he can insult and he run and he say whatever he want and the last one who talk actually the last one should talk is the moderator none of them if you want to be fair but given the last the opening the opening is is a is a, is a horrible uh, 15 minute or 16 minute or 17 minute the guy is reciting an article with endless accusation and now the second person who will talk after that he have to answer all of those but the topic was about Muhammad is a prophet or not but he did not mention anything about Muhammad being a prophet except in the end he starts speaking about the Bible and etc and etc so this form of a debate never never successful and I actually I told Sam and I told him to show my text to David that you should not go on such a debate again if the format is still the same the Muslims he go forever and ever and ever. even when Sam he gave him the mic to answer him a simple question David he gave him the mic and the guy keep going for like 10 minutes and then he load tons of accusations and insult and etc so this fine form of debate giving opportunity for the Muslim to escape the same did uh, David, he did the same with the last person, the one two days ago. And he said that tomorrow he will come, but he never come back. I mean, the second the guy he want to read the book, he gave him a break not to read the book. So this form of debate is wrong. How we do debate Muslims? There's no need for 15 minutes of talk. Let the Muslim say something for two minutes. He made an accusation for to make one thing at the time. Not, you know, you have to make condition first. Say one thing at the time. You don't give him the mic and he start reading accusation after accusation after accusation. And then Sam, he have no choice except to respond. So the Muslim instead now is presenting his religion. He changed the whole topic and he make it about defending the Bible if it's true or not. And if Paul is a liar or not. And if Isaiah is speaking about Jesus or not, when the whole debate was supposedly about if Muhammad a prophet, where in the debate was Muhammad a prophet or not? It's a joke. But let us see how we can. And actually, this guy, he said something. I like it. He said, uh, you cannot debate an idiot. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> but I don't think he meant himself in this statement. Because look what happened. To be the true prophet of God. Evidence is to know Muhammad, the true prophet of God, but it is changed to was Muhammad, was, if Muhammad to was Muhammad, the true prophet of God. No. So, Alhamdulillah, this was my topic. Let me start from the beginning. What I say beginning, when, when I say beginning, it means when Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he was in his mother's womb, his father Abdullah died. When he was six years old, his mother also died. So, so at the age of six, he was doubly orphaned. No father, no mother, an orphan child. An orphan child like that, he grows up in a society full of evil. Evil is the norm. Everybody is practicing vices, evil. Evil is the norm. The days are known as Ayyamul Jahiliya, the days of ignorance. Practicing evil is something normal that time. But Prophet Muhammad grew up in the same society. He is growing up 8 years old, 10 years old, 15 years old, 20 years old, 25 years old. But not a single evil he gets involved into. Not a single evil he gets involved into. How is it possible? This is amazing. At the time of Prophet Muhammad وسلم, people were drunkards, they were alcoholics, they imbibed alcohol. 
they took pride to have alcohol of ancient brand at their homes. They used to serve alcohol to their guests and visitors at their home. Most of them, they were alcoholics, alcohol, drunkards. Prophet Muhammad in the same society, growing up in the same society, 10 years old, 15 years old, 30 years old, 20, 25 years old, he's growing in the same society, but not a single drop of alcohol in his mouth. How is it possible? Stop. You see, this is how a debate will work. He just said something, tell him stop. Can you please stop to respond to this? Can you say something, Sam? That's, this is how debate work. Not 15 minutes, one by one. One, one, one by one, Abdul. And I want this guy, because we offered him already, he heard that I am challenging him to debate me. I challenge him to debate me and to respond to me. Muhammad and Khadija, they made the father of Khadija drunk in order to make Muhammad get married from Khadija, which means it was a fraud. The father of Khadija, he refused to marry Muhammad to Khadija. So Khadija, she made a party, invitation for food. The father did not know why, but they are rich people and they can do that. And when he got drunk, she made him drunk. She kept asking him to drink wine, a cup after cup after cup. Enter the guy, he got drunk. They took off his clothes, they change it, and they make him wear a suit, which usually they wear when there is a wedding party or occasion. And when he woke up in the morning, he said to her, why I'm wearing those clothes? She said, oh, you married me to Muhammad. He said, no, I did not. She said, no, you do. He said, no, I did not. He said, no, you did. And if you, if you try to say no, the whole tribe will make fun of you. They will say that your daughter make you drunk. You got drunk and you, you are not aware of what happened. She blackmail him. So this idiot, he said, Muhammad, when he was six, when he was 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. I'm, I'm so glad you did not continue like day by day. Like, I mean, uh, like 13 in one day, 13 in two days, 13 in four days. I mean, okay, by, by, by years. But how you explain to me the story of your prophet and his wife making the father drunk? And uh, let us show the reference because Muslims and, and Muslims and this guy, this, this guy is an idiot. He, he just said himself, he did not know one Arabic word. But we saw him during the, the chapter reciting verses in Arabic. Why? Because they read in, uh, like, let's say, uh, uh, a Quran written in their own language to make sound of Arabic, but they don't know Arabic. They don't know Arabic. If we go and see what happened to Muhammad, let us see. Let us find some reference so nobody will say we are making things up. This is Musnad Ahmad. Musnad Ahmad is one of the most well-known Islamic books or hadith. And this is the Islamic library website, page number 312, volume number one. Hadith number 2846. The story they're saying, and we can click to translate to English, let us do that actually. Hold on, give me a second. Because even if it's in Arabic, I mean, we can use Google, which is not going to be a perfect translation, but I mean, it, it does the job. So from the start, the start is a, the, the first thing he said is a big fat lie. But what happened when you don't, you give a time for a Muslim to speak for 15 minutes, saying all the garbage you have in the world, and you don't get him busted, well, nobody will get him busted because you don't have a chance. Even Sam, he cannot have time to do that because the guy, he recited tens of things, especially about the Bible. So now if we click translate to English, let us zoom in, or zoom out, sorry. Musnad Imam Ahmad, 
part, volume number one, page number three, 12. It says here that Khadija, uh, Khadija wanted her father to marry him. Uh, uh, translation is, is funny. So Khadija, she went her father to marry her to Muhammad. So she made food and drink, and she called her father and and uh, and people from Quraysh, and they fed them and they drank until they were drunk. Do you see it? Guys, do you see it? Do you see how you get a Muslim busted in two seconds? But when you give him a chance to speak for 15 minutes, saying all the garbage, and the first garbage is gone. Did we see anyone talking about Muhammad? No, Muhammad was drink, a drunk man. Actually, Muhammad used to teach Muslim how to make wine. Muhammad used to drink four nights a week. Muhammad himself, he got married to Khadija by making the father drunk. And this is Islamic books, this is reference, and this is one of the great Islamic books, Musnad Ahmad. Well, I can give you the link in Arabic, uh, and you translate, you use Google translation by your own, when you open it. Here we go. Let me know if the, if the link is, is working. So do you see how we got the master? The debate is over. Muhammad is a fraud because what kind of a man he accept that he get married by wine correct he said that his prophet did not drink wine <laughs> those those are not debate this is not a debate this is a disgusting form of conversation we gave the muslim a chance to insult paul insult john insult luke and we made him speak for 15 6 minutes saying all the garbage and then we don't have enough time equal time actually because you see when you give a chance to a person to attack the answer will not be equal time the answer will not be equal time i can attack a muslim in two seconds i can say to him your prophet was charming star okay now the Muslim, he need time to explain, right? So we give the Muslim to give 15, 16 minutes of accusation. How Sam Shamu can answer the same list, long list of accusations. Each, each one of them need, need 15 minutes, maybe. Please tell David Wood, one by one, for God's sake. When a Muslim Abdul, he says something, says stop. Sam, did you hear him? He said the prophet never drank wine. Do you say, do you have anything to say or we continue? This is how the debate work. And if Sam Shamoon, he said something, the Muslim can say, okay, I want to answer this. Hold on, hold on, stop him. Okay, David would say, Sam, stop. The guy here, he have something to say about what you say. So this is a real debate. This is how, but 15 minutes for him, 15 minutes for me. I go and say whatever I want. He say whatever he want. This is nothing but garbage. Actually, it make me upset. If you notice, I was saying to, uh, to, to, uh, to uh, Sam Shamun, I was saying to him, hang up, man. Just go. I mean, that's not a debate. Imagine a debate happen under the moderator who is a Christian. Yet the Christian moderator, he give the Muslims all the time to brag and to cheat and to lie. I mean, even when Sam, he gave him the mic to ask him a question. It was a time for Sam. It was Sam time. He said to him, what do you answer about this? The guy, he took the mic, he started talking about the Bible again. David did not say, stop, stop. He did not say to you to talk. He gave him from his time. It's his time. Right? Halal Homer, how are you? I'm a coward. Why? Did I... Do you remember when your prophet, a guy, he came to him? And he asked him to sleep with his wife. And then he said to him, but uh, uh, she is the, 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 the mother of the uh, believers. Then Aisha, after the guy he left, she said to him, who is, a, who is this guy who dared to speak to you like this? He said to her, a fool we have to obey, which means if you have to F you, you have to take off your panty. Muta, do you know what muta means? We have to obey. This is the coward Muhammad. A man, he insulted him. He said to him, I want to F your wife. 
Then you are talking about the coward. The coward is your prophet who hide between the legs of his wife when they broke his teeth, he ran away. He never went in a war. He was always hiding in the back. He asked his men to go, and he is in the back. And even when he hid in the back, they broke his teeth. They throw a rock at him from far away. And you are talking about the coward. So look what happened. Muhammad the coward and Khadija the whore, drunken the father, making booty party, belly dancing party, making the father believe that he, and look, she said it clearly, she made him dress a suit, a suit as well they were doing when the parents they have like an occasion. <laughs> you see the fraud? Not only she made him drunk, she took off his clothes with Muhammad. She cannot do it alone. And after the, he get drunk, they took off the clothes and they made him wear the most expensive clothes he have. So they make him, they want to convince him that yesterday there was a wedding, but there was no wedding. There was no wedding party. If there was, if there was wedding, he would wear a suit too from the beginning, not, not after he got drunk, you know what I mean? Do you, guys, do you understand what I'm saying? If there were a wedding party, he will wear the suit. He do not need to get it drunk first, and then you don't get it drunk first, and then you wear a suit. So she made him a drunk, and then after she made him a drunk, she took off his clothes, and she made him dress a suit, so she can convince him that you did zawaj, zawajtana, you zawajtana to Muhammad, huh? He said to her, in, not in my lifetime. <laughs> the guy woke up in the morning. He said to her, he said, what? I, I marry you to this guy? Not in my lifetime. And then she said to him, look at her, how she speak to her father, this whore. Look at this whore. A daughter, she said to her father, aren't you ashamed? Want to fool yourself in the front of Quraysh? Do you want me to tell the people that you were drunk? <laughs> Where are you? The guy with half tongue. And they are going to tell you. The prophet, he never even told him. In the age of 30, and the age of 13, and the age of 13, and he did not do anything. This is your prophet, the biggest scam ever in history. The debate is over. Do we need really to debate this guy anymore? Because a prophet of God, he, the whole point of this statement that Muhammad is a good guy. Here we go, Muhammad, now an adult. He is marrying Khadija. The first wife he married, she is a whore. And he was a partner with her with the fraud and blackmail of her father. We need to teach David Wood, with my respect to him, how to say, stop. Did you say that Muhammad did not drink wine? Did you? Are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we need to teach him this uh, are you sure and uh, Muhammad said yeah yeah uh, are you sure y yeah, yeah say to them are you sure and you will scare the hell off him it is hilarious You see, debate is not only about knowledge. It's about being aware of the game. Muslims don't debate, Muslims they play games. They don't, they never debate. I never saw a Muslim, de I never debated a Muslim. Never, never. As an example,
if you go in the hadith <clears throat> let us see And look, by the way, what the Muslims, they say, they say, a drink made from date, but what drink? This is Nabid. Nabid is wine. Nabid is a wine. Muhammad drinking wine. This is what Nabid means. Different hadith. Let us see a different one. Mm -hmm. Let us see. I mean, if you if you read the translation, the Muslims they have, it's horrible. We prepared Nabid for Allah Messenger in water skin, the upper part of which was tied on it. You know, they have, uh, they make it from leather. They tie the leather together, they make stitches so they can save water in it. And this is the easiest way to have it saved in the top of a camel or a donkey. So you have like two containers made from leather and they have a hole in the top where you can tie it up and you put water inside. I think you saw you saw such a thing in like ancient movies. Uh, how about how people they carry water or drink? So, because the, this kind of things you can carry with you, it doesn't break. It's it is it is leather. It's not like a glass or you know. And those are poor community. They don't have such a luxury of a glass and such a thing. So they used to make to him nabi, and then the man he drink it. At night, at the dinner time, he drink it before he sleep, and he drink it when he wake up in the morning. Nabi. So how we say that to us, this guy, that his prophet did not do that. So we saw that Khadija, she is serving nabid and wine which is the same but it can be like different kind of fruits can be made depend those people they are living in the desert so they use usually like palm date whatever fruits is available for them but usually palm date is where they make it from because this is the most popular uh, exist fruits they have around them in the desert so from the beginning, this guy, he start lying, but there's nobody to stop him. The moderator, he gave him the mic for 16 minutes, for this is a very funny format, where I can say as I wish, until I want. And then all things is, is, is said is gone with the wind. So the first one about Muhammad, not to be a drunk person, that is a lie. And we can show you tons of things. Actually, even the Quran, praise wine. You see, the Quran have verses claiming that the, the wine is a miracle from Allah, is a sign from Allah. So how you say that drinking is, is an evil when Allah, he says it's a sign and a miracle. And not only that, he said it is a great and hasan, rizqan hasan. He described it as a great wealthy, uh, a, a great way of wealth from Allah. Chapter 16, verse number 67. And the, from the fruits of de date palms and grapes. See, now we know what we are talking about. This is the fruit they used to use to make alcohol. 
you 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 deserve a stronger drink. Between two brackets, the Muslim is explaining to us to make it clear. You see, this is this is not in the Quran, but this is the explanation of the Muhammadan. This is, was before the order of prohibition of the alcohol drink. You see it? The God of Muhammad saying this is a goodly provision. <laughs> But the guy, he said that Muhammad never do something wrong, speaking of not to drink wine, while his God said that this is good the provision to drink wine. Do you see how the debate is over before we start? Do you see how it is over? Not only that, maybe you do not know that the Muhammad and and Muhammad, they used to drink and they fell apart during the prayer and we can find that in the Quran you believe it he just said to us that the disbelievers are the one who drink Muhammad was a good guy the Muslims they used to drink and they are praying when they are drunk and they fell apart in the mosque so the guy he stand in the middle let us say Zakir Naik now is his, is his name. This is the Amir Lahim. Alhamdulillah, you love me. That thought is going on in the deen. The person in front of you. Oh, who you believe, the Arab, they start making fun of Muhammad and his religion. For all of them, they are a bunch of drunken men and women who they fed apart when they are drinking during the prayer. The verse in the front of you, this is not my statement, it's in the front of you. Go and read, there's a book, it's called the, the Asbab al nuzul which means the reason for the verses to come down. The Arabs start making fun of Muhammad and his followers, for they fell apart when they are praying. But the guy, he told us, Muhammad and Islam did not do this garbage. Here we go, this is after they became Muslim, and Muhammad is their prophet, all of them, they are drunk. Do you see how the debate is over before we start? Do you see how easy it is? But the problem in this format, there's nobody there to say, stop, did you say that? You know what I mean? Did you just say that, that Muhammad did not drink? Did you just say that Islam is against drinking? When the Quran says that Allah, he said, he described the wine and alcohol as a goodly provision. Who said that? Allah. Any Muslim have a comment? Father like the son? Uh, okay, well, halal uh, humor. You remind me by saying that, because as I know in your Islamic books, they say that the father of Muhammad was a gigalo, gigalo. Is that what do you mean, father like the son? According to your books, the sister of Waraq ibn Nawfal, she offered 100 camel to the father of Muhammad in order to F her. How much your mother she offered Muhammad to F her? The same, the father as a son. Thank you. Halal Humar. You are it. You know, all of you are a bunch of potatoes. This is why I don't dare, none of you dare to, to, to debate me. None of you. And here we go, we offer this potato loud and clear to come and debate me. Is he going to do it? He will never do it. He will be demolished in two seconds. Actually, we did already. We, don't need to, we do not need to debate him. It's over. Stop taking dump from the bathroom. That's a good point, uh, point too. Stop talking, taking dump from the bathroom. Well, as long as you mention talking about dump, let us see what the Quran says about that. He said that your mother and dump is the same. The Quran says a Muslim man, his prayer is not accepted if he touch shit and your mother. Is that true or I'm making things up? 
chapter 4, verse number 43. Is that true? By touching your wife, touching your mother, and touching shit. Who said that? The Quran in front of you. So you are right about speaking about dump, you know, because actually we are speaking about dump, as you see. This is the this is this is Islam. Okay. Well it's time to put you home. And bye bye. Obviously you are a kid. We talk about you know what you say and you say the time to come out to come out. I am out, you idiot. Are you are you out or in? You are in. We're trying to get you out. But it's so small, you know. We what we can do. I have to put my foot to get you out. Now we go back to our topic. So this form of debate, somebody please, if anyone can talk to David Wood, he is not listening. This form of debate is horrible. It let the Muslims get out with all his lies. 16 minutes for a Muslim. Why? What he would do? He would read a book. What about the opening? Okay, choose a topic and tell him, please, please, Abdul, I will stop you if you go out of the topic. You say something, we discuss it, we finish it. So you said, Muhammad, if you don't drink, let us discuss that. Not give the mic to the guy and let him speak forever. Let us see another fact he said. I'm just giving you an example how easy to, to get them busted. Possible. This is amazing. It's amazing, yeah. It's amazing to make the father of Khadija drunk and you convince him after he wake up that he did marry Khadija to Muhammad, which means the marriage not, not, never happened, which means marriage of Muhammad to Khadija is a fraud. It's amazing. Go ahead. People in Arabia at that time, they worship idols. 360 idols kept in the Kaaba. Hmm. 360 idols. They were idol worshippers. Little children, they copy whom? The parent. If the parents are not there, the elders. Isn't it your prophet who carried the black stone copying his parents? And this is written in your book. And isn't it your prophet who kissed the black stone the same as his parents? Isn't it your prophet he went around the Kaaba the same as his parents? Isn't it your prophet he slaughtered to the Kaaba the same as his parents? Isn't it your prophet he adopted a Safa and Marwa the same as his parents? Why we don't stop him? He says, let us see if this is true or not. Muhammad adopted everything the Arab have, including the black stone, the Kaaba, the Hajj, everything. This is all exists before us now. Actually, when the Muslims, they refuse to pray to as Safa and Al-Marwa. Do you know what happened? A group of Al-Ansar. Oh boy. Did we lose connection, guys? I think the new, the new wireless I bought is horrible. Do you hear me? So, uh, when the Ansar, they heard that the Muslim will not practice the ritual of the pagans, which is a Safa and Marwa. And they came to Muhammad and they told him, we have to do a Safa and Marwa, we will not accept that. So what the coward Muhammad said? Read the verse. Chapter 2, verse 158. Behold, as Safa and Marwa are among the simple of Allah. Why they are among the simple of Allah? Okay, we got it now. Allah have a house. As Safa and Marwa is what? <laughs> what is that? This is a place where there is two idols, one for male and one for female. And those idols, they have sex inside the Kaaba. Isaf and Naila. And this is mentioned in their books, explanation for the verse. And the Muslim, they refuse to accept those because this is the pagan ritual. But because Al Ansar, they insist they want them, Muhammad, he agree with them because Muhammad, he don't want to lose them, for he's a fraud. 
So he said, okay, no, no. As Safa and Marwa is uh, from the simple of Allah. And look what it says here. So if those who visit the house in the season at other time should comp uh, 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 compass uh, them around, it is no sin in them if any of them do that. It's no sin. Why? Because a group of Muslims, they say this is sin. This is pagan. Why want to do it? Supposedly, Muhammad, he came to change. Muhammad now, accepting the symbolic of the pagan in order to get Al-Ansar to follow him. How we can pr prove this is to be true? Go and read the Muslim interpretation. We can go right now and read the, the Muhammadan interpretation. Not our interpretation. You see, we don't, we don't do what the Muslims do. The Muslims, they come with their own interpretation for anything, you know, they come with the Bible as an example. So, uh, uh, chapter 2, verse 158. Chapter 2, verse 158. Muhammad, obviously, is a horrible pagan cult leader. Read carefully. The Muslims rejecting to go around as Safa and Al Marwa. And Muhammad, he made a verse, says, It is not a sin to do it. Why he was saying it's not a sin? Because they believe it's a sin. Because the Arab pagan, they used to go and circumambulate them. And there was an idol top of each mount. Or mountain of them and they used to stroke this is exactly what Muhammad is still doing if you go to the book of Asbab al Nizur, this is Tafsir al Jalalain you will see he explaining clearly that the Muslim reject them because this is what the pagan they practice they also used to avoid going between as Safa and Marwa when Islam came, they asked Allah Messenger, Allah bless him and give him peace about this. And Allah the Exalted revealed the verse narrated by Al-Bukhari, etc. This revealed, this verse was revealed about a group of people and they, they called them the helpers, which means the Ansar. Uh, before Islam, they used to make a, a Hajj to Manat and they were forbidden from going between as safa and Marwa. And then when they went to do it, Allah Messenger bless him and give him peace. They mentioned to him this. We want to do a Safal Marwa. You know, this is our religion. Come on. So Muhammad, he said to them, Oh, okay, go it. Go and do it. Do you see it? It was the request of a Safa and Al Ansar. And as you see, the Arab, they believe. Look, look what it says here. Anas ibn Malik said, We dislike. Going between as Safa and Al-Murrah because they were the shrine of Quraysh, the pre-Islamic period. And we abandoned them in Islam. Do you see it? Which means every single Muslim at that time, he understand very well, this is pagan practice. So how Muhammad accepted? So do you see the coward, the liar, when he's saying that Muhammad did not follow the pagan when he is a pagan? And not to forget to mention that the Quran mentioned that Muhammad, he received satanic verses, and the interpretation clear says to us, and the hadith, that when Muhammad, he received the satanic verses, he bowed down to the idols around the Kaaba. And he praised the three daughters of Allah. The whole debate is over. There's nothing to mention anymore. Do I need to continue? Every single thing he said is false. Somebody saying that David Wood was a debate. No, David Wood was not debating, and nobody does the debate. Actually, Sam Shamoon, he spanked that guy with no mercy. No. Nobody can win with Sam Shamoon. And we are not talking about, you know, the Muslim, he, he, he's just a piece of garbage, this guy. He's just a kid. You know, he's a growing man, yes, but he's a kid. He has a brain of a mosquito. What we are talking about, that format of such a format of debate is not right. It gives the Muslim the chance to play the games he wished for. And he speak forever, and then it's impossible to answer all the claims he said. As an example, he starts mentioning that Jesus is the same as Adam. 
But the Quran never say that Jesus is the same as Adam by the numbers of the, the, the time they mention. The Quran says that both of them, they were created by CMB and it was. What numbers? So they are fabricating a new way, which is against the Quran. The verse in the Quran is so clear. But again, because nobody will say to you, stop, did you say that? This is how it works. You stop him. You should tell him, can you read the verse? Does the verse say that Adam mentioned 25 times or Jesus mentioned 25 times? Or it says that the similarity between Adam and Jesus, that both he said to them be and was. What is the numbers? Did the Quran say that Jesus mentioned 25 times in the Quran? No. The verse in front of us. But there's nobody there to say to him, stop. You are changing the meaning of the verse. The verse says that both of them, Allah, he said, be, and it was. But then if we go and check how Adam was created, we will find that Allah did not say be to Adam and he was. Neither to Jesus. According to the Quran, Allah, he created Adam by making first dust. Then he mixed the dust with water that will make it mud. And then he made it from the mud the fashion of a human being. And then after he fashioned him as a perfect man, he breathed into him. Never say be. This is what the verse is about. So what he starts so in 19 time and 25 time and garbage. But because there's nobody there to say to him, please, you need to, you know, in order to debate, to debate a Muslim, you have to enforce the topic. You have to enforce it. A Muslim, when he debates, is the same as a guy driving a jeep. And there's no road. He go to the top, is in the top of the rocks. He, he won't go to the road. He will avoid all roads. Don't let them do that. You need to have a skills to debate the Muslims. And here the, the mistake is not the debater, is the moderator. The moderator is letting the Muslim play what the game he want. They speak forever. Give 1,000 accusation, and nobody says to him, stop. You have to enforce their words on them. Enforce their words. The guy, he says something, said to him, stop. Did you say that? Did you just say that? This is how it works. Not the mic for 16 minutes. He say all the words in the world, and then after he finished, nobody even remember what he said. So, look, the guy he spoke only for two minutes, I got him busted in the two minutes he spoke. Just the two minutes. Everything he said, it was a lie. So from the beginning, the debate is over. Now he continue. They copy the idol. What do you expect a child like Muhammad growing up in the society to do like worshipping the idol? Because he would follow the elders, he would do the, imitate the same thing, and he should worship the idol. But no. No. He did. He kissed the black stone. He go around the Kaaba. He praised the three daughters of Allah. He did everything. Well, actually, even the Quran says Muhammad was a kafir for the first forty years of his life. The, this potato. I mean, just just bring me this guy. Just you know, do, do you, I don't anyone remember old old laundry machines? Anyone remember it? Let me let me find you. Old laundry machines. We used to have one in our house, but my, you know, my mom, she didn't use it, but like it's an old, it's like, a, you know, they have a big space in the, in the house. So they have it in the corner. It was really funny. Uh, let me see. I, I think not, maybe, I don't know how many of you saw this before. Here we go, I found one. Those people, they need this. <laughs> this is a roll. You put the clothes between them, between them, and then there's a like like a uh, a stick. You know, you move it, and then the clothes will come out a dryer. It's it's going to squeeze the water out of the clothes. You know, this is what those people they need. You have to put them 
between those two narrow things and push him hard, 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 and squeeze all the juice out of him. Otherwise, the juice will never come. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> a brother and sister, the prophet, he did not listen or he did not practice all those things. Hmm. True story. I'm really convinced, brother. True story. And now he will go for 16 minutes saying the same garbage. And nobody will say to him, stop. We got you busted. So, Prophet Muhammad, he grows up in the same society. 8 years old, 10 years old, 15 years old, 20 years old, 30 years old. But never ever he bowed down to idols. Never ever he bowed down to idols. How is it possible? This is amazing. Wasajada wasajadu. When he prays the Allah and Al-Uzza and Manad, the third one, the Hadith says, Wasajada wasajadu. He bowed down and they bowed down with him, coward. Continue. At the age of 2025, he earned the title as Sadiqul Amin. Exactly. As Sadiqul Amin to the point he made the father of Khadija drunk. And when he woke up in the morning, they told him, you get me married to Khadija. He earned it, you know. By the way, if there's any girl here, her father will not accept to marry, to marry me to her. Listen, we can do this. The same plan of Muhammad. It's a very decent. And if I do it, I will earn the title of the decent. Listen what we would do. If your father don't like to marry you from me, because I'm an Arab, maybe, <laughs> and I don't blame him. Uh, <clears throat> Did I say I don't blame him? <laughs> okay, nobody hear it. Oh, listen, we can make your father drunk. We invite your cousins, your families, huh? And we say nothing about me. I will not even appear there until he gets drunk. And when your father gets drunk, you say, Hey, come here, Arab, come here. You open the window for me. I go from the window. We take off the trouser of your father. We take off his jacket. We change his shoes, his socks, his underwear. And we make him dress the most expensive Gucci suit he have. And then we throw water on him. Wake up, wake up, hey, wake, hey, wake up. Uh, 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 oh, what happened? Oh, why I'm wearing those clothes? Ah, uh, you forgot? You married me to your daughter. This is what Muhammad did. As-Sadiqul Amin. The beloved was a sadiqul Amin, the child molester. We cannot trust Muhammad even with the cat in his lap. Can you trust a man? He wanted to have sex with a child, and he did. Hmm. Okay. You are the most truthful, most trustworthy. Most truthful. You are truthful or those trustworthy? Isn't it the Arab they call him Kadhab, a liar? And the Quran says that? I mean, what's wrong with those Muslims? Did the Arab accuse Muhammad that he is a liar? Look at the Arab. The Arab, they say, Muhammad trustworthy or they say he's a liar. And look at the translation. Look at the funny translation. Where is the word liar? And then those who reject of you, Muhammad, they did not reject him. It says, book they accuse you of lies. Change the translation. You will see the transla translator. Everything changed. Just to show you the scam of the Muslim translation. We cannot find the word liar. You see? Do you see, guys? We change the translator. Suddenly the word, but if they cry lies to thee, Lies were a cry to messenger before thee. Change the translator. Look, 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 look. You change the translation you ch the, as, as if you are changing the whole book. This is how fraud they are in their translation. 
I mean, what happened to this thing? Why, why disappear? If they believe thee, so even though we are billed, <laughs> what did it not? It says, Kadabuka, they accuse you of lie. And until now, we cannot find one decent translation saying clearly, they accuse you of lie. You are a liar. Let us see this guy. Unbelievable. <clears throat> Aha! Finally, we get a decent uh, translation. But if they accuse you of lying, do you see it? But the guy he said that the Arab they said to Muhammad, he earned the decent, the name of a decent, uh, trustworthy. But the Quran says the Arab they accuse him to be a liar. Remember, those are the majority, not the minority. Muhammad only have a few people who follow him. So how they accuse him of lying, but he earned the reputation of trustworthy. A person who is trustworthy, they will not say to him, you are a liar. And this is all over the Quran. So maybe we shall continue about this in other time. But uh, this, if, if somebody can speak to David Wood, Tell him this format is very wrong. He's free, you know, this is his channel. I, I have no business to tell him what to do, but I can give him advice. That Muslims, giving 16 minutes for a Muslim to say whatever he wants, far away from even from the topic. I mean, at least tell him what is the topic. And why 16 minutes? Who in the world needs 16 minutes for a presentation? Give us one thing at the time that Muhammad is a prophet, one thing. Four minutes. Four minutes. I mean, why need four more for than four minutes? Choose topic. Name one thing that Muhammad is... Let us do it right now. Who is a Muslim can give me four minutes? Uh, give me something about Muhammad. Who want to call me in Skype and give me something about Muhammad in four minutes as a prophet? Isn't it enough? Four minutes? It's more than enough. And then we discuss. Actually, you need only two seconds. Because you are presenting an idea, you are not asking a question. Then I have the one need more time to prove you wrong. As an example, he says the Quran is a book of science. The Quran book of science. The Quran is, the Quran is a book of stupidity. Choose one. John Joseph let me in. Are you a Muslim? Why you are calling yourself John Joseph if you are a Muslim? Are you a Muslim? There is too many holes in the narrative. Yeah, and I forget about the Muslims. See, I don't blame the Muslims for doing what they do. I'm blaming now the Christians. You see, we Christians, it's time for us to learn that when we debate Muslims, we don't debate them. They are people of games. They try their best to speak about anything except the topic. What Muhammad is a prophet have to do with Paul if he is good or bad? You tell me. Right? What Muhammad is a prophet have to do with John or, or Luke or Mark? What does it have to do with this? But when you don't have a moderator who is doing the things in the right way, he's a Hindu. My friend, take your cow and leave me alone. Why I want to talk to you is if you're Hindus, what I would do with you? You have 36 million gods. If I give you the microphone and I say to you, can you count your na their names for me? For me, we will we will spend the coming ten years just to tell me the names. Nobody can debate you. You are a Hindu. Thirty-six million God. Okay, tell me their names. Go go ahead. The first question. We can make a country with thirty-six million gods. This is bigger than my family. I thought my family is big. I want to say it's bigger. I think it's bigger. 36 million. That's a lot. This is more than all the kids of my grandfather. All right. <clears throat> I am hardcore disciple of Christ. Okay, John. What, uh, we here. We we do not need the Christians to call us. Anyway, thank you. So. <clears throat> oh boy. 
Guys, how many of you hate me? Be honest. Islam demolition. Let you in. Okay, are you what what is your religion? Islam demolition. Your expertise is Islam demolition. Hmm. I don't see you demolishing Islam at all. Hmm. Uh, you are a Hindu? Okay, I'll give you a question. You know, by the time you answer it, let me know. Can you give us the name of the 336 uh, three, million? God? There's nothing to debate about somebody's Hindu. Hinduism, Hinduism is not religion. Hinduism is a, is a bunch of ideas, philosophy. You don't believe even as a creator. There's no creator in, in Hinduism. So why you call them God? I mean, this is the most funny, stupid religion ever. The same as Muhammad. There's no God. I mean, sorry, there's no creator. But you have 36 million gods. So what they do? I mean, why you call them God? What they do? They dance? They're good in dancing? If those gods did not create anything, so what they do? Well, no, sad, uh, the sad guru, he says there's no, there no creator. I mean, what's wrong with you Hindus? You do not know your religion? So this guy, sad guru, he said there's no creator, and this is how creation happened. It's a dancing energy. And you are saying to me, there's a creator? Which one of you is the guru now? You are the guru? Are you guru? Obviously, it's a very confusing cult, the same as Muhammadan. God and goddess. Yeah, he said 36 million gods and goddess. And, you know, actually, Muhammad, he stole a lot of ideas from the Muhammad, from, from the Hindus. The black stone is the black stone of sex. It's a sexual object. They have a, a stone for the male part, private part, and female private part. It's a very sexual religion too. Uh, Dahman, Dahman, the word bush, bush. It's not bush, bush. It's not bush, bush. Dahman, Dahman is like when, I mean, come on, man, this is embarrassing. How am I explaining to you? To you? Come on, you're an adult. All right, my friend, don't worry. Actually, I'm going to block this guy. He's, he's uh, disturbing the world. No, I cannot let you, my friend. I, have not, I, I am not here to debate uh, Hindus because simply there's no religion in the Hindu religion. Hinduism is not religion. You have a temple for rats. You have a temple for rats. And you believe they are goddess. I mean, come on. There's nothing we can debate about. Rats. Exactly, there's no debate. I can't believe it that there's a temple for rats. I mean, if you are a rat and live there, you are you are very lucky. I feel sorry for the rats in my areas. Me. Mm. They buy for them poison, etc. You know, they are, they're, 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 they are gods. Well, God is crossing the street. God is crossing the street. Muhammad. Look, actually, I find there is similarity here between Muhammad and this. Muhammad, he, des he decided that the rats are Orthodox Jews because they don't, they don't drink cam uh, camel milk, if you remember. Right? The Hindus, they found out that rats are gods. Oh, okay. Look like we are getting closer. But Muhammad is a genius for sure. I mean, how he discovered that rats and Jews, they are, they are one, they are this one nation. That's amazing. <clears throat> Anyway, here my topic is not Hindu, you see, but for me, all cults are cults. All cults are cults at the end of the day. But my specialty is Islam. I don't want to mix things up. But I think, you know, I think about it, by the way, I was saying to myself, man, look, 
The rats discover that Islam is stupid. Even rats, they are not drinking camel milk, neither camel urine. Islam teaching the opposite. I'm not mocking my friend, I'm saying what I believe. How come when I speak about Muhammad, you don't say I'm mocking? The second I speak about your belief, I'm mocking. I'm just saying a statement, it's hurting you because it's obviously your belief is stupid. This is the fact, temple for rats. Are you all hurt? Am I lying? Say I'm lying. Rats. At least make it a chicken. I mean, a human being is weird. Honestly, a human being can be a really amazing, uh, uh, crazy. And guys, Children in India, they don't have milk. The rats, they do. Oh. Mm. The gods are drinking milk. Mm. Mm. People are dying, sleeping in the street, poor country, no education. And then we build a, a huge temple for rats. Huh. And you are saying I am mocking. It's called Kami Mata Rat Temple. Okay. So anyway, going back to our topic. I'm going to open a temple for mosquitoes. At least we can gather them and there we keep them busy and they will not bite us. I mean, guys, when I go outside, mosquitoes, they love my skin. Unbelievable. As if I am the only living human being in my town. The second I walk in the street, the mosquitoes is all over. Like, so look what I did. I said to myself, I'm going to seek revenge. So once a mosquito, she flies in front of me and she starts doing the Islamic stuff. Like Shahada, you know? So I, very fast, you should see how fast I am. I, because I used to wear a cowboy, you know, by the way. I'm very good in fast uh, gun shooting. So very fast, I capture her with my hand. Now she is inside my hand. I put my hand in the front of my mouth and I gave her all what she deserved. I start saying to her, until she cannot take it no more. She said, please let me go. I will never get it close again. The coward mosquito, after I let her go, she came back. You believe it? By the way, this is a true story. Let us discuss the Bible. This is okay. Sure, go ahead. What do you want to say? Why don't discuss it right now? But you don't want to talk about the temple of the rats? Hmm. My blood is O type. Actually, when I went to the hospital, they told me there's, we cannot find what is your blood type. They told me it's called the bladine. You know, bladine? Because I drink a lot of mandarin, you know? So it's like, this is, by the way, if you don't believe this, you can find it in Sahih Bukhari. <clears throat> Do we have any Abdul want to say anything? Don't you sleep? I just told you mosquitoes all over. I'm going to sleep. What's wrong with you? Don't you notice? Like, hello? <laughs> so you see those such a those are not debate. You know, this guy I can I can I can grab him from his nose in the first two seconds, the first two minutes he called. 
And now we offer him to call me, but he, there's no way he will call me. They are potatoes. Sam Shamun can eat him alive, actually. Just take the moderator off. This moderator is not needed. The problem in this debate is the moderator, David. He's doing it in a very wrong way. I'm not attacking, I'm, I'm not attacking David, by the way, but I'm saying he, he's very bad moderator. He don't fit there. Thank you, thank you. Walahu, walahu, kahirul, makarim, my friend. Can you make your name easier? I need to. I need to spend a week to learn how to read it. So now, if you say to me, God give you will, I have to spend all this time to read your name. Islam demolition. I will let you. I will let you in. Okay, here we go. You are just a kid. I just told you. Don't change my topic. Get lost. I'm not here to debate Hindus. You are being stupid. You don't even count for me as a religion. Temple of rats, 36 million gods. Debate you about what? Which one of them? You are seriously stupid. In order to debate somebody about religion, he had to have a belief. You don't have a belief. You have gurus. Everyone say a different story. It's a philosophy. Everyone give you a different interpretation. We have nothing to debate about. This is the truth. Why do they get upset? A Muslim, I can open for him the Quran and say, Quran says that. You have books which every guru give his own statement like like this this poor guy the, the hindu guy he called me two days ago or yesterday he said you know we don't have 36 million gods he accused me of lying then i played for him what sad guru he said why this hindu who is an adult mature man he never heard that he have 36 million gods before because every one of you have different interpretation for the religion You took the name from my book? Ah, no wonder the name is messed up. Okay, Wallahu Ka Kari Kariul. Ah, this is, must be in the Indonesian translation, huh? Ah, okay, Indonesian. I was wondering, this is not really this is how good my my by the way I speak Indonesian, but I don't like to use it because I'm kind of humble, you know, I don't like to show that I speak languages. I speak all languages. Al Hassan, he speaks 70 million languages. Al Hassan, my cousin, the grandson of the Prophet. 70 million only. I mean, when the Muslims exaggerate with their lies, you cannot even cover those lies. 70 million languages he speak. Only? Don't you think he's short in love of languages? Like, hello? Only 70 million languages he speak. Muhammad do not know how to read his name. His grandson, he speaks 70, 70 million language, brother. Only. <coughs> do we have any Abdu want to say anything? Uh, Lord Ram was born to a horse. My friend, he was born to a horse, he was born to a mule. Who cares? I, I, I don't, as I said, Hinduism is not a religion for me. Hinduism is a collection of legions, it's an ancient legions. They made out of those ancient legions gods. There's nothing to debate about, it's not even worth debate. And trust me. Sooner or later, all Indian they will become Christians, because Hinduism teach racism. And how racism work? Is it like racism against Indian? Yes. For this religion teach you that there is high rank people and lower rank people. That cannot be God teaching. That is not even a human teaching. 
that is satanic there's no higher kind of people like Brahma and then there's a trashy people this does not exist the Brahma are you know in high position because simply they are the one control the economy they are always the rich they are the one who have palaces they are the one who always have servants and the poor one they never go to school this is against a human behavior until now in India like unless you get lucky let us say you became a software engineer and you discover something you have copyright over something and you became a billionaire until now the rich ones are rich since thousands of years and they are from families where they are the goddess families grow this are the, those are the close to God families Maharaja that's not a good religion Jesus did not even ride a horse he never had a servant he did not need one Jesus even he washed the feet of his followers and not only that he told them if you don't because they wanted to reject he said to them if you don't let me do it you don't belong to me I don't know you he did not say I am Brahma I'm from the high rank and you are down even though he's God what do you say about Sikh I say it's the same it's a cult born of cult at the end of the day Sikh is a collection of cults mixed together the same you know I saw many uh, uh, movies speaking about the Sikh uh, they are uh, brave they have honor blah blah but what does have to do with being a you know I mean okay there's many nations they are brave that doesn't mean that your God is right <clears throat> anyway The first Buddha was a Hindu. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. All is the same. You know, like first time I saw uh, a Buddha temple, or let's say like not a temple. It was like, a, you know, a place they pray in the street. They have little toys. And I was saying like to myself, what is that? Toys, toys, you know, a toy of an elephant, a toy of a girl, a toy of a guy. I mean, I don't know. So, Human being is really weird. I mean, how a human being can believe in this? Right? Actually, I don't think anyone knows even what Hindus is about. Because Hindu is, as I said, it's, uh, it's in this collection of interpretation and philosophy. And I don't see any good in it. And Islam is no better. You know, this is what happened when you, you are looking for God and you could not find one. You come with the you, you, you come with God as a rat. I mean, how desperate a human being is to find a God and this God is a rat. But what we can debate about, I mean, introduce to you the gods. I will get enemy from the Hindus now. I don't care enemies. I know for me, you see, I don't. If I don't speak uh, about Hinduism, doesn't mean. I mean, every Hindu, even those who they, I have a friends who they are Hindus, they knew I'm a Christian. So I believe Hinduism is a false cult. 
If I don't speak about it, because it's not my specialty. You know what I mean? But every Hindu, the second you say, okay, let us make it simple. A Muslim, he believe everyone else is a cult. A Hindu, he believe everyone else is a cult. So why I will be an enemy to the Hindus? They believe Christianity is a cult too. You know, why you, why you have to have an enemy now? Are you going to be the same as Muslims? Well, obviously, there's some Hindus, they are violence too, I understand, but I don't care. I mean, the one who stands against Islam, he don't care for the rest. Uh, <clears throat> Sufi Islam is, is not exist really. Sufi Islam, you know, when, when the Muslims, you see, when Islam conquer many religions, or let's say many nations, those nations, they found themselves out of something spiritual. Sufism is a religion out of Islam trying to find a spirituality in the dry Islamic spirit. So they start adding things have nothing to do with Islam. As an example, dancing, music, uh, parties, all of those things. Because simply Islam is a very dead. There is no activity. The rituals of Islam is dead. Music is haram, singing is haram. So the Sufi are a group of people trying to get those things by trying to make it legal. And I find them not Muslims. <clears throat> Do we have anyone? Any Muslim want to say anything? Muhammad, you said it clearly that dance is haram, music is forbidden. The one who do music, Allah will make him a pig and a monkey. Yeah, they do that. They aren't Muslims. They are far from Islam. This is why you see that uh, the Muslim Sunni, they attack them in Pakistan. Or er, almost every few weeks, there's an attack in a Sufi mosque in Pakistan, Bangladesh, etc. They kill them. <clears throat> All right. If you remember the guy, actually, the guy who I made my books respond to him. Anyone remember his name? Just to give you an example of the Sufi. This is the guy who his name mentioned in my book. Adnan Oktar, he called himself Harun Yahya. He is the, he is the first one who come with the Quranic science. Look at the versions around him. This is a version of the Sufi. Bikini wine drinking he have wine in front of him he have sex with all those girls look at this man i want to be sufi mm. that's a lot of sufi oh boy look at the sufi here that's really that's a lot of sufi that is sufi lorin lorin sufi lorin yeah sufi that's what, what the heck i want a man and the poor me sitting in YouTube, and I have a bunch of guys uh, and calling me. Look at this, man. I want to make a book. It's called Quran, Book of Science. All, the, all those guys will come. Look at this, man. Oh, boy. Oh, mommy. Oh, mommy, mommy. Look. look. Oh, I want to I wanna have a birthday. Christmas tree too. I mean, there are Muslims with jihad and Christmas tree. Okay. Hmm. And the skirt always is so long. And all of them, they have big boobs. Hmm. I mean, okay. Oh boy. 
Look at this. Man. You know what? If Muhammad, he see what you have, trust me, he will, he, he will leave Islam himself. He will become... For sure, I'm jealous. What are you talking about? Look at this guy in the chat saying, I'm jealous for sure. Look at this. What's wrong with you? Are you blind? Can't you see, brother? Oh, look at this. Oh, boy. Oh, man. They are dancing. By the way, he do those things live in TV. He used to have a TV. Now he's in jail, by the way. Uh, he used to go live in TV and look how many how many uh, iPad from the expensive one in front of him. All those iPad in front of him. And the girls, and this is live TV, and the girls are dancing and look, but, but we have to be honest. We have to be honest. She is wearing burqa. You see, she is covering her face. Very conservative. I mean, whatever you want to say, I know what you want to say. But look, you cannot see her face. So we have to admit that he got a point there. You know? This is, I mean, like, hello? You don't need to focus on the skirt because in Islam, actually, uh, you know, it's okay, uh, the skirt, but the, the, the cover, the face cover. But look at this one, what she is doing. Is that a turkey dance or something? And look how he is looking at her legs. Do you see how he's looking? I mean, this is live in TV. This is this is how this guy he got people to to look at this man. Okay, guys, I have to go. I'm going to change my program. I think I I learned my lesson today. Instead of getting you, you guys. I mean, look at you. I mean, what the heck? This is not fair. Look what this guy he got, and look what I got. Me. Oh, look, look at this one. And in his TV show, there's no guys. They put the guys, if there's a guy sometime, he put them in the back. <laughs> and all the girls, either they are so blonde, and all of them, they have fake lips, fake breast, you, know, you name it. Look at this. I mean, there's nothing fake there. <laughs> <laughs> no comment, no comment, no comment. Yeah, this is the one who is behind. A brother. Look at this brother. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, I can't breathe. I'm wasting my time sitting here next to, to talking to you. I mean, look at this. That's it. This is here. You can find God. That's so clear, so beautiful. The funny Erdogan, the fatty Erdogan, he did not go after this guy until he said that he support Goron, his enemy. Suddenly this guy is ugly and they arrested him and they found all the accusation in the list of the books of crimes and they put him in jail. But he was a good guy for Erdogan as long as he did not attack him. <clears throat> but anyway, I think to be an Islamic preacher in Turkey is something fun. I think it's good. I think it's um, healthy and uh, very interesting what this woman she is wearing did you see the girl in the middle what is that guys do you do you see the dress <clears throat> what is this what 
Like, what is that, man? The woman, she's wearing nothing. What? Look, what? Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Oh boy. I think YouTube is going to close my account now. It's, it became a, a, like, by speaking about Islam, it became like a porn channel. What is this? <laughs> oh boy. And they have a Christmas tree. <laughs> How this guy he said look look at him he became a millionaire a lot of money he have yacht he invite all those girls six parties you know wine drink all the girls they have to be very blonde sometime he accept women with black hair sometime not always <laughs> <laughs> and this is him when he got arrested can you believe it this guy he used to have bodyguards I mean he became something but he was really arrested yes he is a very bad person and I believe he is doing human trafficking and sex business. But the main reason Erdogan he arrested him because he support this man, Golan. They are friends. The teacher of Erdogan, now he is his worth or his enemy. He lives in Pennsylvania, USA. <clears throat> Um, we have Putra Kangagoga saying that CP is a liar. Why am I a liar, Petra? Petra, why am I a liar? Can you tell me why I'm a liar? What I said, it's a lie. Can you tell me, please? Okay, I have a challenge for you, Putra. In front of everybody, can you prove me lying about one thing I say? Is that fair, guys? Potra, she said the Christian prince is a liar. Potra, you have all the opportunity to prove that the Christian prince is a liar. And if you prove me wrong, guess what? I'm going to send you a ticket to join the club of Hori Butar, Harun Yahya. With all those short skirts, you can have fun. I mean, you can imagine. So what do you say, Potra? Can you prove me wrong? What do you think? Because, <clears throat> you know, talk is cheap. You can say whatever you want. But can you prove me wrong? Potra is not posting anymore. I think Potra now is searching Google. What do you think, Potra? You bet that Potra don't speak English? Don't worry, my friend, he's a Muslim. Allah will give him speak all languages. According to my experience, Muslims speak any languages except the one you speak to them with. But yet they recite the Quran, they say Allah Akbar, but they don't know Arabic. It's a miracle. <clears throat> oh boy. Let us have a better, uh, better scenery from the garbage of Muhammad. Do we have any Muslim want to say anything? Debate you? 
Okay, go ahead. I'm ready. Are you ready? Guys, put trouble and debate me. Okay. Uh oh. My uh, my mouse fell down. See what happened? You said debate me. I, I got scared. My mouse uh, got uh, down. There we go. See what you did? Even my mouse scared. I got scared of you. Mouse, mouse. You know, you must be a cat. Because usually my mouse never scared from anything except a cat. <clears throat> hmm. Anyway. <sighs> get down. Get down, get down, act differently. This is what Muhammad is said. When the Jews, they said to him, this is how we do it. Muhammad, what he said? Get down, get down, act differently. Hmm. <clears throat> uh, it's because you humiliate the temple of the mouse. <laughs> All right. He said not torch Skype, he is a crowd, a coward. Okay, just forget about him. Do we have any Muslim want to say anything? I have a question, maybe out of topic. Can you tell me the zoo name is now? I come on. Hmm. Do we have any Muslim want to say anything? Maybe we can continue later, I mean, in, in coming time. I mean, this guy, we just get him busted. And, and the few things he said from the beginning, it's a, it's a stupid lie. And let us see if he will dare ever to call me and debate me. We can't even call it a debate. I mean, I, was, I, will, I, will, I will take his nose away from his head before even he's used it to sneeze. <clears throat> CP, I am a Hindu, we love Jesus. Okay, my friend. But doesn't mean I believe that Hindu is uh, is a right belief. You see, why, why people get upset if we tell them the truth? I mean, why you take it personal? Why, why people, they are, I mean, I don't know. I don't know how smart we are. It's not a secret that you believe in your religion that it is the perfect and everyone else is wrong. For you, Jesus is just a man. For me, this is wrong, right? <clears throat> I, I don't get, get offended if you say to me, Jesus is just a man. Because I understand you are Hindu. You don't believe in Jesus. But why don't accept what I believe about your belief? Why you get offended? Right? It's not a secret that when you speak to a Christian prince, he is a Christian prince. Any other belief other than Jesus, and not only other than Jesus, you have to believe in exactly what is written in the Old and the New Testament. Any other cult, we don't believe in them, as example, Jehovah's Witnesses, Mormon, etc. Those are cult. Yet they claim that they are Christians, but they are cult. <coughs> Uh, why the the Bible says the earth uh, is a flat? That number one, that, that is a big lie, my friend. Do you like to call me, Mister Revelation one, seven one? Do you like to call me and show me what it says? Because there it doesn't say the earth is a flat. It says, it says the four corners of the earth. I can show it to you in New York Time, and in the year two thousand twenty, they are using the phrase. It's a term of a language. The four corners of the earth. In your map, you say it's four corners of the earth, but doesn't mean that the, the earth is flat. It's a figure of speech, but it's a new Quran. The earth is flat. And I have an offer for you. You call me. We we'll read the verse from the Bible, and I will show you from your Quran that the earth is flat. Not only one verse. I will show you endless numbers. 
So if we can't find a book saying the earth is flat clearly, that book can, must be false. Do you agree? Do you agree? Where is the guy? Do you agree? All the Quran confirmed that the earth is flat. Actually, I can show you right now your sheikhs explaining that yes, the earth is flat. Anyone who says the opposite is a, is a, is a liar. Any Muslim? Who is a Muslim when I mention when I talk about the earth is a flat? The Bible verse versus the Quran. Who wanna do that? See they are going quiet. If we go right now to the Quran, we will find that the earth is a flat. It says clearly, well, ardu ba'da dharika dahaha. Or dahaha. Stupid statement. And the earth after that, he made it flat. Chapter 79. Verse number 30. And the earth after that, he spread it flat, not spread it. Do you see it? That's your Quran. In different verse, Allah He says He made the earth a bed, flat bed. <clears throat> Where is the guy when I talk about? The flat earth. Chapter 43, verse number 10. And look what it says here. And he made the earth habitate to you. Doesn't say that. Change the translation. Just to show you how they lie in the translation. This is who? Itani. Let's see Muhammad Hila and Khan. He made the earth like a bed. How the shape of the bed? You tell me. Do you see it? This is how the bed looked like. If you never saw a bed, I will draw it for you. Maybe you never saw one before in your village. This is how bed look like, look like Abdul. In case you never saw one. Do you see it? Where is the guy of the flat earth? Do you want to sleep? Because it's ready for you now. Allah, he made it as a bed. That's it. Go sleep. Big mouth. Big mouth. They have big mouth. They speak too much. They say nothing. And they accuse you of what they have, not what we have. Always the Muslims, they accuse us of things they have, not us. This is chapter 43, verse number 10. This is the verse says, Allah, he made it a bed, literally. And then we go, we can find more verses. <clears throat> Allah, he made the earth as a carpet. Chapter 71, verse number 19. You tell me how the carpet looks like. Do you want me to draw it for you? Or you can imagine it. Did you see ever before a carpet? What happened? 
Can you show a full verse? This is a full verse. Are we showing whole verse? Guys, can you show a full verse? Here we go. It's in front of you. You I feel free to read 10 verses before and 10 verses after. What full verse? And actually, the verse before it had nothing to do with the verse after it because Islam is the Quran is a stupid book. Look at this. What the verse before have to do with the verse before? Have to do with the verse before? Have to do with the verse after? Nothing. Show us the verse before. You show us. Here we go. The verse before. Okay. So what the verse before have to do with the verse after it? Nothing. And did really Allah make the earth as a flat carpet? Is it? If you fly in the airplane, after less than two minutes from the airplane going up, you will see the curve of the earth. That's a lie, my friend. That's a lie. That's a lie. This is they, they are talking about chapter 79. That's a big fat lie. Actually, this this lie made by a kid, he you know he came to debate me. He is the one who made this video, and I got him busted. It's a kid who made this uh, lie that the Earth is in the shape of a of an egg. Even the stupid Zachary Naik, he took that video from YouTube and he said the same. But I think later, Zachary Naik, he don't dare to say that again. They told him that you became a donkey when you said that. So not even one translation says the word egg because the fact it says the haha, which may make it flat. You can go right now to the interpretation for the Quran. This is chapter 79, verse number 30. And this is the Muslims website. And you will see, yes, it says flat, literally. <clears throat> Do you see it? And he spread the earth and he made it flat, and the earth was created before the heaven. <laughs> before the heaven. Yeah. But you know, when you make a translation for people who are ignorant, they don't know, they don't speak the language, they don't know how they know, they can lie anything, you can say anything you want. This is why it's very important uh, to have more people translating my books to all languages. So if you're a person who speaks Uzbekistan language, you like to help us, translate my books. And we will give it to them for free. You know what I mean? This is why we appreciate those who they are translating. For reading, their translation is very needed. Link, please. This is the a tafsir. This is this. This is the website owned by the King of Jordan. The biggest fraud. Do you watch football? I don't have time for those stupid things. Actually, I advise you if you are a person who watch football, not to do so. And I will tell you why. What football is not a game no more. It's not a sport. It's a business. And you have to agree, correct? Those who play in this game, they make hundreds of millions from your money because you decide to become a fool. If a sport became a profession, it is not a sport no more. And if a team, 70% of it is not from the country, which present in the country, this is not a team no more. Go right now, check the team of uh, France, whatever the team, I mean, I'm not really familiar with the names, or England, 70, 60%, one from Nigeria, the other one from Egypt, the other one from Somalia, the other one from Russia, the other one, where is the team? This is business, this is a disgusting business. And only fool people, they spend money in such a business. 
from your money they get rich and you got nothing except watching stupid TV go and do something useful for your life what about you go play football so you can get some strength in your body and have some sport why you want to watch sport do sport go swim which one is better sitting in your ass watching a bunch of idiots making fun of you they became billionaires actually those guys they don't even have high school yet they are making hundreds of millions of dollars and you're the poor you you work like a donkey all day long and then you, you you pay for a ticket to go or you pay for cable tv to watch the game even the table tv tv they pay a lot of money so they can't play the game for you and who's going to pay for it you we are not talking about politics max what does this have to do with politics i'm talking about sport this is politics now so we talk about football this is politics for you so i think when you want when you watch news you flip what to cartoon channel because obviously you have a misunderstanding of what is politics what is not <clears throat> i never watch those things i prefer to go and do something useful for somebody better than this garbage and whoever lose whoever win what's your what what you want nothing you see people killing each other people literally they burn cars they beat each other people are crazy they are worshiping football those people in europe they are sick european today those who worship football they are sick a guy he called his son muhammad because muhammad salah I mean, that's it that's it he will call his son muhammad <laughs> crazy people sick This is what happens when you are shallow. When you are shallow, you are shallow, you are empty. Anyone can push inside your mouth anything to make you full. <clears throat> All right. Why are you Christians against people religion? You cannot talk. We do whatever you all must be silenced. It turned out you do not believe in Jesus. Uh, King Cuckoo, I think you are a cuckoo. And you are stupid. You just told us we should not attack others, but you are attacking us. I mean, you are a certified donkey. Because if you don't want people, if it's not right for people to attack someone or other believe, then you should not do that too. But you are doing it. I will tell you why, because you're a cuckoo. And I think your wife, she chose the right, the right name for you, cuckoo. Like your wife, she wanna, she wanna throw the garbage in the street, she say, hey cuckoo, throw the garbage. Hmm? You are the cuckoo of the house, genius. I mean, you see, when you watch the chat and what people they come with, you will notice how stupid some people are. It's amazing. I am a Hindu. Jesus loves me as I love him. And I do not need Christian to tell me anything. This is the truth. But I, I don't understand you. I mean, how you are a Hindu and Jesus loves you. How you learn about Jesus? From Hindus? That's weird, I don't know. Because if you believe that Jesus loves you, that means Jesus now is alive, he exists, <clears throat> and he's God. So what Jesus for you? Just one more God? Additional to 36 million gods? You are just deceiving yourself. Do we have any Muslim want to say anything about the earth is being flat? <clears throat> Muhammad Jibril paganism was copied by Jews they copied by Christianity and then copied by Islam so the origin of those religion is paganism this is your opinion but obviously you do not know what paganism is about paganism is about you worshipping idols we don't worship idols neither the Jews so what you say Muhammad Jibril is stupid my friend
Nej. Obviously, you do not know what are you talking about. Where, where the Christians are copying the paganism, and where the Jews are copying paganism, and where is the pagans in the belief of the Christians or the Jews? Do we believe a stone is a god? Do we, we have? Do we worship a stones? But people they say statements and they they are funny. Christianity and Judaism are two different things. That's not true. Who said that Christianity and Judaism is two different things? Why isn't it the Bible, the Old Testament, is part of your belief as a Christian? All the disciples of Jesus they were Jews. And they are Jews, but they are Jewish Christians. All Jews are Jews who wait for Christ. Those who accept the Christ, we call them Messianic Jews. <coughs> um, all right, anyone have any uh, comment? Any, uh, any funny comment from Mohammedan or atheist? And by the way, atheists, they have a point. Actually, once I debated an atheist, and he did let me bust it, to be honest with you. He asked me a question, which very embarrassing. He said to me, do you like banana? I said, <laughs> yeah. He said, see, your ancestor is a monkey. Okay. He won the debate. I mean, how do you explain to me that we like banana and monkeys like bananas? Christmas was a celebration of the first sunshine by pagan. That is very stupid of you, Jibreel. The Christmas word means a Christmas, Christ. It's a Christ day. So you are stupid again. Because we are not celebrating the sun to say this is sunshine day. Very stupid of you. So you want to say to me that in the 25th of December, the Western they used to celebrate the Sunday. Okay, no problem. But Christianity came. And those people left the pagan sun they worship and they believe in Jesus. How this is can be paganism. Stupidity is amazing. And just to let you know that the date, which is the 25th of December, maybe the Western they agree upon that date because of their own they have their own calendar, not because it happened to be the 25th same day of the pagan, and the proof of that. The Orthodox, they have different calendar, and it's not the 25th of December. So again, you are a stupid fool. What the 25th of December have to do even with the Christianity? It's just a date. So if it happened that you are born in the 25th of December, and your parents celebrate, obviously you are copying, etc. What is the wrong if Jesus is one of the 36 million gods? Because it's the idea is very stupid. Because why those gods they are exist and why they stop with that as long as you believe in this a huge number, why they stop with the 36 millions? And what, what is the benefit of those 36 million gods if none of them is a creator? What they do? And why there's male and female? What they do? They have sex? What is this? And like, okay, they, they became 36 how? Shouldn't you explain to people how this happened? It's the size of a country, my friend. 36 millions. Which one of them is your God? All of them? <laughs> That's a legend. You don't need to be a genius to, not, to, to find out that this is, this is stupid. <clears throat> Uh, you guys don't have an answer. This is why I don't talk to you, Chicken Prince. Okay. Don't you? But you are talking to us. Who is the chicken then? It's you. You just said you chicken out to talk to us, and you accuse us to be the chicken. Huh? 
By the way, I just saw an egg coming from your ass. Excuse me. Because this is you saying you don't want to talk to us because we are chicken. Oh, but I mean, the one who don't want to debate us, obviously he is a chicken, not the opposite. What about you call me right now and let us see who is the chicken? Can you be the rooster? And you call me and debate me? Otherwise, you are proving to us that you are the chicken. Seriously. The one who don't dare to speak to us is the chicken. We keep saying to Muslims, give me your Skype, I will call you. Chicken. By the way, as long as you are talking about the chicken, I can show you the hadith where it says that your God, Allah, he ride a rooster. I mean, I never heard, you see, the Hindus, they have gods, I don't know, strange gods, but Muslims is the same. I mean, God, he's riding a rooster. Can you tell me how God, he ride a rooster? Where is the guy who spoke of the chicken? Here we go, you remind me of this now. You have to face the consequences. In the front of everybody, I challenge you to say, I will call you to show me that Allah, he ride a rooster. Allah sitting in the top of a rooster. Are you there? This is why I find there's a lot of similarity between Islam and Hinduism. Hindus have a black stone, sexual stone. Muslims have the same. Even there's a hadith that says, that when Allah he decided to create himself, he made, he was created from the sweat of a horse. Sweat of a horse. He made the horse run, and from the sweat of the horse, he created himself. Don't ask me how. <laughs> Is Jesus this from him i understand what for moses yeah. <clears throat> any abdul abdul you need to be careful when you talk to me any three words you say to me i can bring you a story horrible story about your prophet honestly three words actually we can make a challenge what about right now who's a muslim here smart muslim he posed in the chat three words, anything you want. Any three words you can imagine. And from the three words, I will get you a story about your prophet. What do you say? What do you think, guys? Any three words. Look how sure I am. Three words, not 20, not, because it's easy from 20. I mean, come on. Three words. Just make them better, uh, words, not letters, no? Any Muslim? <clears throat> Do you believe in aliens? For sure I believe in you, Prince of Peace. Now come on, aren't you an alien yourself? Look, I cannot see you. You are invisible, speaking from God knows how many thousands of miles away. Still we can talk, you must be an alien. So yeah, I believe in alien. Actually, in the other day, I went to the bathroom, and I look in the bathroom, I found an alien there. They, they call him in, uh, in the language, it's called Karach. You know? So what are you doing here? You know, this is not your place. You know, so anyway, uh, you know, I flush him, and he went back home. Alien? <clears throat> No problem. How can a man call you call God? How a man? How can a man you call? Is that English? Cuckoo? Well, I don't know. You see, it's possible that God, he created other creatures in some way. Maybe. Why not? You know, why not? It's very possible. But for us, what we know, that we are 
spoken to as a human being and we don't know about others but maybe why not i mean god who created us maybe he created um, a million earth like this earth we don't know but why i want to waste my time to think think about aliens and there's no proof of such a thing I saw a documentary about NASA that they were receiving a signal from the space for almost, I forgot, 13 years, 17 years, 20 years, I forgot the number. But anyway, many years, they were wearing signals, a signal and they could not explain it. Very confusing, but it's using a very close, uh, like a waves, which we use. And after all those years, guess what, what they found? They found it was the microwave in the center where they have the satellite. The microwave. When you turn the microwave on, the satellite received those signals. They thought it is from an alien. <laughs> so 13, 17 years making newspaper articles about receiving signals. Newspaper talk about it. NASA, they receive signals. Scientists cannot explain it. They are studying it, conference about it, slide programs, talk show, and then we find what? It was the microwave. If you don't believe me, it's documentary, it exists. The microwave. They changed the microwave. No more signal. <clears throat> oh. And I'm not receiving any signal right now because I don't have microwave here. CP can do nothing except mocking others. Okay. Well, I love mocking, to be honest with you, especially if you are a fool. As an example, let me mock you. Hmm. Jesus said, love your enemy. But Jesus himself, he said, you are the sons of the devil. So you are, obviously, you are stupid. Because from all the statements Jesus said, you learn only two, two words. So you are mocking yourself now. Jesus called the liars hypocrites. Even he said to them, you are liars. So you are asking me to make a mockery of your stupidity and ignorance. For you, you thought Jesus spoke two words only. Love your enemy. But loving the enemy, Jesus taught us, is by rebuking them and getting them busted. And this is how and what he did. So again, you made a mockery of your stupidity. Thank you very much. Jesus of the Bible is weird. Oh, okay, he's weird. You know. Yet, your computer run by his date. Obviously, you are so weird to accept that. And you know what? I will give you a chance from now until the coming century to change the date of Jesus. Can you? It's weird that your computer, your salary, your life run by the weird Jesus. Stupidity is amazing. If you can believe in three gods in one, we don't believe in three gods in one. That's stupid of you again. I mean, where we get those people from? Honestly, those people they come here i mean do you go to school do you try to read before you open your mouth where we get those people from who is the one who told you that a christian believe in three gods in one who said that we don't have three gods do we have three gods do we really have three gods what three gods in one <clears throat> When we say Jesus is God, Holy Spirit is God, Father is God, but this is still one God. We don't have three gods. We don't believe in three gods. We don't. Not a single Christian believe in three gods. Jesus said the Father and I is one. The one who saw me, he saw the Father. The Bible says that the Messiah, the Christ, is the visible image of the invisible God. So God is invisible. You can't see him. 
through the Christ. He is the visible image of the invisible God. Oh. Yeah, we believe in God, God in three person. If you say to me, why God in three person? Uh, the answer is very simple. You see, everything around you in this life explained by God as a three person. Water, H2O. Water, Ice, steam, liquid. Everything around us is explained by number three. The element of life. You need light, which means the sun, the light. You need the air. You need the water. <clears throat> so, just to make it simple, if I say to you, I have ice, or I say I have water, or I say I have a steam. Isn't it the same? Is that correct, guys? If I say right now, I have ice. But instead of saying to you I have ice, I said I have water. Am I lying? No. Because ice is water, Steam is water, and water is water. But yet there are three. But it's one. As simple as that. But if you are naive, that's your business. The steam does not worship ice. That's funny, Mira. Did you think about it too much? That's, that's genius. Stupid example? Why it's a stupid example, Mira? Tell us why. Just to show you who is a stupid here. You said the steam does not worship ice. I mean, you must be a certified donkey to say such a statement because we are speaking about how they have different format or different look, but still the three of them, they are water, which means the core, the nature is the same. The appearance look different, but all of them, they are H2O. And you saying eyes don't worship Steam, that's stupid of you, because we are talking about ice and water, nobody worship anyone. You are a certified donkey again. No, you are a certified donkey. How you say ice don't worship steam, what does that mean? Stupid. Right? You cannot understand until you believe it. That, that's not true. You understand without believing it. You do not need to believe first to understand. And you know the, the, the idea, if somebody says uh, how that can be, or how God can be God then. If you say to God how you can be God, then he is not God anyway, because how you can be God? Right? How did religion exist? I'm curious. If religion is like 10,000 year or a little longer, but the earth is millions of years old. You see, Prince, this is your assumption of the years. Like I understand that scientists, they say the earth is 3,000, 3 million, billion, whatever years. But those numbers can mean nothing. You know, to make it simple for you. Until now, scientists, they could not really go in time and show us where a human being was a couple of thousand years ago. We don't have anything. Where was a human being? Why we have nothing? So if a human being was exist for millions of years, 
after millions of years, why we don't get the millions of years of fingerprint of a human being? If they want to say to us that a human being came to existence not long time ago, you have to explain to us how he came to existence. So let's say for sake of argument, the earth was created 50 billion years ago, not millions. Still, you have no history of a human being being exist for 50 million years, or a million years, or 500,000 years, or 50,000, you have nothing. So where was a human being? What happened? Why your science in this ability? So how come your science always asks for evidence, and when we ask for evidence from those who speak of science, they don't have it? You know what I mean? Well, you are saying dinosaur carbon dated for a long time ago. Okay, no problem. It's possible that God created everything, but he did not create the human being right away. Maybe, but let me tell you as a simple study. How, how the scientists, they created the method of carbon or even salt. As an example, to measure how old the ocean is, they measure how much salt go to the ocean every year by rain. And they divide how much the ocean have as salt already to the average of, of rain carrying salt with it every year. But this method is very stupid. Why? Because it might happen that in one year, maybe 90% of the salt exists in the ocean now happen. Why? As an example, we have the flood of Noah. The flood of Noah says that water was pouring or pouring and coming on the ground and the whole earth is covered. So whatever salt was in the top of the earth will move all the way to the ocean at the end when the earth appear again. So this scientific study is a really stupid study. You are assuming that the faucet was a, was a drop in water to make it simple for you. Let's say we have a swimming pool. And then we need to know how long this swimming pool, it took it to, to be full with water. It's a big swimming pool, it's called ocean. So let's say there's a faucet dripping, let's say five drops a second. So what we do, we calculate five X whatever minutes a year to find out how many drop a year went to the swimming pool. But who said this faucet was a drop in five drop a second now is the same was dropping a year or 10 years or 10,000 years ago. So your method of, of science is silly and stupid. It's a theory. The carbon you are talking about is a theory. Do you understand? It's not a really a fact. This is why the scientists themselves, they don't agree about the age of the earth themselves. This is why the scientists, they believe in God and the scientists don't. Do you ask yourself why in NASA, there is many scientists who they are Christian that they are believers? Did you ask yourself why not every scientist, the highest scientist is an atheist? You know what I mean? Why not every scientist, high classified scientist, they are not atheist? Because if this is true, that means all scientists should be atheist. All right, please. So you know, like uh, you know, when when they speak about science, I find science is not really, is not a truthful statement. There's no science in the science. It's just a, a practic a practical, let us say, laboratory uh, theory. It's not real. As an example, they say to you, it took the Himalaya, or etc., a million year to exist, the Himalaya mountain. Why? Because they measure it, let's say the Himalaya grow every year, uh, two centimeter. So how high the Himalaya now? We divide how many centimeters there is, how too many centimeters there is, and then we will find how many years took it to be a, a mountain in that high. 
But that's very arrogant theory, because it might happen that the Himalaya came to exist very big right away in one year. It may be in one day. It can be. Right now, as we speak, actually, there's many islands in the Philippines. They appear and disappear overnight. Sometimes people walk up, they find a new island coming from the ground. Then the island disappear in one day. Did not take it a million years to come. Did not take it a million years to go. Right? <clears throat> Science, you know, the same science we are talking about is the same science believe that the earth was a flat for a long time. Those scientists themselves, they are the one who taught us that the earth is a flat. You can all, of course, go and read the book of histories. Then after that, they found that they are wrong. And this is the case for everything. Most of the science we have, it was proven to be right, and then the science proved it to be wrong. Scientists proving themselves wrong later. Well, I don't, you know, for me, the evolution, it can be true only if you are talking about that God, he gave his creatures the ability to adopt. But if you want to say that we used to be a cell and then we became a human, that is stupid. So like as an example, uh, people who, uh, they grow up in certain area, in very cold area. They can handle cold way easier from somebody grow up in a very warm, hot area. When I went to the Philippines, uh, once I remember, I, I went with a, a very nice brother. He's a he's a church minister. He, you know, we agreed to meet. And he said to me, "Aren't you cold?" I said, "What? I said, Aren't you cold? What cold?" The temperature is like 26 degree, you know, very nice. He's cold, 26 is cold. For me, this is perfect, but 26 is cold. He's a Filipino, he's not used to cold. So for him, this is, this is winter. For him, this is winter. This is cold, he's wearing a jacket. So what happened? He is not used to cold, so his body is not adapted to it. So what is cold for a Filipino is the most nice weather for somebody is coming from Alaska. But both are human, and there's no difference between them. This is what evolution I believe in, that God, he gave you ability to survive, so you adopt. Do you think anyone who may have found the Garden of Eden were killed or never happened? I don't care for those stories, my friend. The Garden of Eden, it exists for, uh, you know, it's a garden. Let us say it's a field where those two creatures, Adam and Eve, they do not need anything. God provide them. It's simple. It doesn't have to be something very special. Any, any, any spot in the earth can be the Garden of Eden. For God, he say, be is going to be. If he say, be beautiful garden, it's going to be beautiful garden. Why you are worried about location? Even though in the Old Testament it's mentioned, like, you know, the direction of it or, or location, but it doesn't matter, it's gone. There's no Garden of Eden, no, because simply, God, he, he kicked them out, which means the, the garden does not exist no more. The garden was created for a purpose of having Adam and Eve. If Adam and Eve are out, there's no garden no more. Um, and uh, Daniel Mira. You speak about uh, uh, like a DNA and the code. I mean, this is very silly of you. 
Because after all your science, can you create a creature without using DNA exist? You see, when you see in, in the, that the first sale happened, okay, make one, make the first sale. Don't use any material. Because you believe in the Big Bang, there was no nothing, right? Okay, create something from nothing. Can you start with that? Any theory cannot be practiced is a stupid theory. So when you say that DNA, you need to ask yourself, okay, let's go to the root of this story, the DNA story. You say there's a Big Bang. There was no matter. There was no time. There was nothing. And then explosion happened. But this theory is so stupid at the point. You are saying there's nothing, and then something explodes. How there was nothing, and something explodes. You know what I mean, guys? There's nothing. How the nothing will explode if there's nothing? I find the science of the atheist is very funny and weird. Big Bang is so stupid and give you no answer. In order to have a big explosion as the one we have, they call it Big Bang, supposedly, it have to be amazing energy. But you did not explain to us where this energy is coming from and how energy can, gener can generate matter. Because if it was just an energy, that energy will not create dust If it was just only electron and proton, okay, electron and proton for what? Is it material? Is it something solid? If you mean by energy, it is something not solid, moving electrons. How the water come to existence? How the sand, how the dirt, how everything come to existence? That, you know, this is stupid. And why you cannot do it right now? Why you cannot do that? I mean, the, your theory, practice it. You have all the laboratory. Actually, they created a machine in, in Europe, uh, the Big Bang machine. They spent hundreds of millions of dollars for nothing. They could not do anything. Big failure. They want to create a new universe. They could not create anything. And the funny, it's very stupid, by the way, that in order to make the Big Bang, you have to make a machine. But you just said the Big Bang happened without anything. So now you are using material and microwave and laser of material which is exist to make what is going to be supposedly created. Can you prove that God did it all? Can you prove that God did not do it all? You see, the, the very simple question is, if you can ask yourself the same question you ask me, but because people, they are shallow, why don't ask yourself the simple question? If we cannot prove the Big Bang Theory, so how do you believe in it? I mean, just to show you how, how, how funny your statement, can you prove that God created all? Why you don't do the same about yourself? Ask yourself, you believe in the Big Bang Theory. Can you prove that the Big Bang Theory did that? Can you? So you are saying to me, if we cannot prove it, this means God does not exist. Well, you cannot prove your theory, but your theory is exist for you, and you believe in it. You know, Mira, we don't. We will not take now Skype. I'm going to go soon. So here you see the double standard of a human being, how he think. When he want, he accept without proof. When he want, he want proof. You know what I mean? Why you don't apply the same standard on yourself when you apply it in others? 
For me, it's very easy to, to, to believe in God, actually. Because, you see, the creation is not all about only creation. It's about the design. The design is amazing. The design of what we have is beyond amazing. It cannot, it's not possible it happen by itself. The design of a human being, your design. You see, if we are, let us say, create, you know, created by accident, how do you explain the emotion in a human being? How does this happen? How do you explain a charity? A person believe in charity. If we are just animals, how how this can be true? Why somebody he is going to help somebody is poor? Why a human being is doing that? He's an animal, according to you. How how that can be true? Where this is coming from? If our existence is just to survive, eat and drink and have sex, well, we should not. We should live as animals, literally. And if you go and check how animals live, you will find that animals they eat each other eat alive. As an example, they claim that we used to be monkeys. Monkeys, they eat their babies. Cats, they eat their babies. Lions, they eat their babies. They eat them literally. The male eat their babies. This is why when a female monkey, she has birth, she hide her baby from the male. He will eat it. Same time, if we ask you, why the female monkey she have too much love to her baby, but the male, he wouldn't eat the baby. What make that something, the emotional part for the female inside her? Is that an incident? That female, they have it, male, they don't? Both of them, they are the same creatures. They are the same species. There's nothing can be explained. Except that God, he gave the female, even if she is an animal, even if she is chicken, if you come to a chicken next to her baby, she will jump on you as if she's a lion. Even yet, she's a chicken. How the chicken became a lion? How this nature is implanted? If she is just a chicken like every chicken, why? How, how come only when she has a baby, she is so aggressive? Right? So obviously, there is a fingerprint of a creator because we find all animals share the same thing. The female animal, she protect her babies. The fish, even she swallow her babies inside her to protect them. Imagine she move, she swim, and her babies inside her mouth. When she find the place is secure, she open her mouth. They go out to swim a little bit and they go back. Right? How come? There's a fingerprint of a creator. Always when there is one, you see, how we know that an artist, he draw that paint as an example? Because simply he have a way of designing things. He have a special way of his painting. So expert, they can find if this is made by him or not. The same for God. You will find that all the creatures, they have a lot of similarity in the creation. Why? Because they have one designer. Why the cat have heart? The fish have heart. The lizard have heart. Human have a heart. Why we have the similarity? Is that because we used to be one cell, but then the cell, one cell decided to be leather, lizard and the other one be, decided to become a chicken? That is funny. But because the, cre the creation is done by one creator, it's a one design.
Ouais. Euh, many priests say we have to believe in Jesus so we will get eternal life. How the explanation of the statement? What I have to do to make to make it in my life? Well, you know, we don't do believe in that because the priests they say that. Jesus said clearly that eternal life is those who believe in him. He said, whoever believe in me and die will live. So simply, it's very simple, do not need explanation. If you believe in the Messiah, that he is your Lord, he is your Savior, he will save you. He will save you from what? From the eternal death. What eternal death mean? You have no mercy from God. And you will go to hell. This is what death is. A place for those who rejected God. A place of sorrow. So, explain to me. There is no need to explain. Believe in him. And you will earn the promise. You will be in his kingdom. Do I need to explain it? To make it simple, let us say there is a firefighter. He comes to your house. He said to you, I'm a firefighter. There's a smoke coming from your roof. You say, I don't care. I don't believe you. You knock at the door, open the door, please let me get you out. I want to save you. Eh, I don't care. You go and sleep. You find yourself in the morning burned alive. Can you blame the firefighter or you blame yourself? Christ is the same as the firefighter. He knock at your door many times, saying to you, believe in me and you will be saved. You say to him, I don't care. I don't believe in you. I don't believe there's even fire. It's a lie. You say, I don't believe in fire. I don't believe in heaven. This is garbage. Okay. But time the fire will come and you don't deserve to be saved. So can you blame God for not saving you? He told you, I want to save you. You said no. So, we don't believe in the Messiah because a priest, he said, we believe in the Messiah because the Messiah taught us how to be saved. Jibreel Muhammad saying, in European, they keep Christian culture, celebrating Christmas, etc., but they don't pray to any God. That's false of you, my friend. There's a huge number of Europeans right now, as we speak, is still Christians. When I went to France last time, which is last year, every Sunday, churches is full, and there's no space for you to stay or sit. Actually, the same church, they have more than, I think, five or six service to, in order to cover the number of, of people coming to the church. So what are you talking about? Right? Uh, <clears throat> there is a warning of Luke, warn Christians who will dealt will be dealt with more harshly. How does one know if you fall into that category? No one perfect, but Jesus see to be. I'm not sure what you mean. Are you saying we will be very much discriminated in some time? I'm not sure what you mean. <clears throat> See, always when somebody say uh, uh, any idea for you, try to think it yourself and don't, don't be under the influence of liberalism. Liberalism is a person he's trying to seek drugs, comfort, uh, let's say comfort himself. Like he say, I'm a Christian, but for him it's okay to have 10 girlfriends, uh, sleep around, uh, do drugs, and yet he claimed to be Christian. That, that's liberalism. That is a person fooling himself. He's not fooling him, anyone else, he's fooling himself. You know what I mean? So, the Christ teaching is very clear. There is no so-so. 
either you are cold or hot so I can drink you, swallow you. So, so is not accepted. There's many these days, they try to be the so-so, thinking that by being so-so, it's okay to be a Christian so-so, but this is not true. My friend, Luke or other book, we as a human, we always under the category of sin. For all mankind they sin, all mankind. Because of that, God, he sent his only begotten son, right? For he loved the world. So you are always in the, the category of sin. Who said you are not? Who said I am not? All of us, we are sinners. If we are not sinners, we will not need savior. Why we need a savior if we are not sinners? The savior, he saved us from our sin, not from our good. Do you understand? Muslims always say, why did Jesus order to kill the children? Okay. Well, why did God order to kill the children? Don't the Muslims believe in the flood of Noah? Hypocrisy. The Jews, the enemy, they killed their children in war, and they killed their children too. Why their prophet Muhammad, he says, when they came to him, they said, Ask him about the Rari, which means the children of the infidels. He said, Wahum minhum. Kill them. Kill them. Hypocrisy. Don't the Muslim believe in Sodom and Gomorrah? Yes. Don't the Muslim believe in the town or the city of Saleh, which God, Allah, supposedly, he whistled and he sent wind and he destroyed everybody right there? Children live there. He killed them all. Stupidity is amazing. Never discuss a topic with a donkey. Uh, Farid responds, uh, yeah, the Fifi is a potato. You see, those are nightmare for themselves because they, they see me in their nightmare time. That's why they keep talking about me, but they don't dare to debate me. You see who is the nightmare of who? Those who keep talking about me, I don't even see them. But yet they don't dare to get close to me. So who is the nightmare of who? In order to know that somebody is nightmare of somebody, you will notice that this person has nothing to do except attacking you. That means whatever they see, wherever they go, they go to sleep, they're thinking about me. And your guy is a is a is a is a girl. He's not even a man. He called me Habibi. He's a homo. And he blinked his eye. Anyone who lived in the Middle East, he knew that Middle Eastern who blink their eye in a certain way, they are homo. And it take you two seconds to find out that Fifi is a homo. Uh, Judaism and Christianity and Islam teach, teach to fight against disbelievers. That is a very stupid statement of you, Mr. Jibril. Can you show me where Jesus said, fight against the disbelievers? Can you find, can you find me? Even in the Old Testament, the fight against the disbelievers, not only just because they are disbelieving, but because they are a threat and they are attacking the believers. You know, uh, Muhammad Jibreel, you are just like a, a kid. And he have a, his diaper, there's a hole in it. And the more he walk in the room, the more people come out. But you can approve it. I mean, at least when you talk about Christianity, can you show me what Jesus says, go and fight the enemy? Or you are just a, a stupid kid. That is the LAB. Okay, I think it's time for you to go.
I was trying to talk to you as an adult. Each time I say something to you, you never respond. Go. Don't come here again. Jesus, he ordered to fight his enemy and to kill them. So how many people Jesus killed? How many Peter killed? How many Paul killed? Very stupid of you. If you want to tell me the crusade, the crusade 600 years after Jesus happened, when the Muslims invade the Christians. 600 years before Jesus, there was no crusade. I mean, from the time of Jesus. <clears throat> Right? When you talk about Jesus promoting war, then you have to show us Jesus who go for war and kill. Where is where is Benoni? I don't know what Benoni mean, Raya. What Benoni mean? Do we have any Muslim want to say anything? Any Mohammedan? And you know about killing, uh, the killing can, be, uh, you know, see there is, there is just a fight killing and there is unjustified. Killing is always ugly, but yes, killing can be possible. Jesus said, those who live by the sword, by the sword shall die. What does that mean? If you are a criminal, you kill by the sword, people will kill you. This is justice. You go kill people, people will go after you. For justice, you are a killer. They will kill you for killing. That is justified killing. If you kill somebody, he never killed anyone. That is not justified. If you go in war with others and then the others, they go after you and they kill you or seek attack back, eh, you are the one who went after them. <clears throat> and you know, the funny, the Muslims or many atheists, they brought stupid things to, to make it as a logic. They say, Jesus, he said, I came not to bring peace, but sword. But they will not read the rest of the verse where it says, the mother will be against her daughter. And I mean, this is this is the sword he's talking about. That because of you, people will hate, will hate you because of me. No, there's no huge difference between teaching of Old Testament and New Testament. There's no teaching, actually, there's no difference at all. Where is it different? You see, there is <clears throat> there is always a uh, very way, uh, let us say, very shallow way of thinking. I will explain to you. If I say to you, in the time of Napoleon Bonaparte, people they used to have a wig in their head. You will laugh, right? You will laugh. Why people they wear a wig in that time? Very funny. Very stupid, actually. But at that time, it was their lifestyle. And if you don't wear a wig, there's something wrong with you. Okay. So in order to understand something done or happened in a certain time you need to understand the mentality and the situation of that time so what people do they think that 3000 years ago it was the same as it is today there's a human rights department and there is facebook if somebody do something wrong people they record in the camera and they post it if somebody killed george floyd the news will be all over, and uh, why you did that? Shame on you, you are racist. 
We are talking about thousands of years ago. The Jews, they've been enslaved the whole nation twice. The whole nation, not one, two, some of them. So in order to understand what people they go through, we need to go back one time. Not just to ask questions. Why killing was justified? Because everybody was killing them. Everybody was enslaving them. You see, today we talk about that white man is was enslaving the black man. But we never heard of somebody saying the truth too, that African man enslaved the white man too. <laughs> Isn't it the Egyptian or African? And they attack their neighbors and they enslave them. Do you understand me guys? The African, when they are strong, they enslave the white men. The white men, when they are strong, they enslave the white man, the, the black man. So the Jews, they were living in a land where everybody enslaving everybody. Any second, any moment, people attack you, take your wife from you. Kill you, take your wife in front of your eyes. That was the lifestyle at that time. So a foolish person is the one who don't think. Or a story in the contact of the history. He think it's today, 2020. Even today, 2020, yesterday they took our church from us. In the front of the whole world, theft. People, they have a lot of hypocrisy. So what they try to do, they try to say, oh, your God, he ordered them to go and attack those. But those people are attacking them, killing them for centuries. Can you imagine the whole nation taken as goats? Them and their chicken and their goats. The whole nation, they took them with them. They came to Israel, they take everybody. Come, go with us. All of you, women, children, men. They used to collect human as if they are trash. If you have a big army, you bring everybody to serve you. And this is the African enslaving the white man. But nobody talk about that. So in order to understand something happened thousands of years ago, you have to go back on time, thousands of years ago, before you ask your questions. You know what I mean? Uh, don't be shallow. Be smart and ask questions based on reality, not in fantasy. Not in fantasy. You know, if you look at the, uh, I, I wish like some of you try to practice some kind of uh, being historian, because that will, will is something hilarious. As an example, before Corona, anyone remember what was number one news in USA TV stations, radio? Anyone remember? You open any radio station, they are talking about, should they make the bathroom for transgender with the women? You believe it? That's what they are busy with. Why? Because they are spoiled, American. They, they want something to talk about. Barbecue is good. Jobs are good. Economy is good. Money is good. And now we want to get busy. So what we get busy now, we are confused about the transgender. What, what, what is our gender? Are we male or female? Should we put in the ID the, 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 the gender or not? Uh, busy. They are busy with stupid things. Corona came. And now nobody speak about that no more. That is how shallow and how stupid a human being is. 
when death come, nobody care for where the transgender is going to piss. You know what I mean? What happened? Yesterday it was number one topic. Corona came, nobody talk about it no more. So you notice that a human being is very shallow and very stupid. Why Trump does not wear a mask? Here we go. They, they want to make the guy a criminal because he's not wearing a mask. Okay, they want to wear a mask, but so what's the problem? They want to attack the guy. Shallow, you know, stupidity. No, my friend, the liberals are very, very uh, shallow people and they will come with different ideas. As an example, you are saying that one day they don't want more clothing, right? The fact is going to be the opposite, just wait, because those people, they get, they, they get bored. So they come with the idea of being hippie. Then suddenly they don't like the hippie. They became more conservative. Then they get bored from being conservative. So now they, wanna, they don't want to get back to the hippie, so they create a different story. And the story is immigration, justice, uh, black life matter, but the fact none of them, number one racist party in the world is the Democrat Party, the, the, the party of Obama. They are the one who fought against the freedom of a slave. They are the one who abused the black people. They are the one who killed them, literally. So liberals, they are very flexible snake. Depending on the situation, if today the topic is Black Lives Matter, they are Black Lives Matter. If a Black Lives Matter to tomorrow is not good, they will switch to White Lives Matter. Which one will make them win the agenda? They go for it. You know what I mean? For their agenda is agenda of the devil. They have nothing really. They are empty. They just want power and control. And they are people who believe in dictatorship too. If you don't agree with you, they want to beat you. They are the same as Mohammedan. Terrorist. If you wear the hat, uh, the hat of a Trump, they want to beat you up. Look, look what happened. In USA, the majority are the Christians. There's no question about it. The major population are the Christians. Forget about those liberals you see. We are the majority, and not only that. USA, Christians have different, they are different from other places in the world. They are very heavily armed. You will find that maybe 97% of those who join the army are conservative Christians. You can ask any Christian. I was in the USA army too. Most of people who join the army, they are coming from Christian background, family, conservative. Yet they are the most peaceful, even though they are the most heavily armed people. We don't see them going in the street, burning centers for the liberals. They go to our church, they try to burn it, you see in the TV. You don't see Christians going crazy and going after them to, to do something, you know, we, we would not do that. But are we capable of protecting ourselves? Yes, we are. Easy. Very easy. But we are smart people. Let the government deal with them. Let us do things right. Otherwise, if we want to be savage like those savage who go on the street, burn cars, we can do the same. We are the majority. We, they, they are no match to us. They are no match in number. They are no match in, in everything. So, we don't do what they do. Because if we do what they do, if we do the same as they do, they work like them. But are we capable of protecting our churches? We will do that, absolutely. If the police will not, we will do. If Trump will not, we, will, we, know we are just watching. All of this madness is just to not to let Trump win the election. You see, Obama was in the office for eight years. We did not see them burning cars for a person, a black person who was... Actually, they did that. Obama, he encouraged them to do that, if you remember. He started attacking the police, and then they started shooting the police. 
Obama is a very filthy man. He wanted to burn the country, actually. He wanted to start a civil war. A civil war. They hate America. Actually, if you ask me, I wish one day that liberals in California, they will be independent state. If we can get rid of California, USA will never be liberals again. Because this is the biggest population they have. And this is why they are controlling the Congress most of the time. It's unfair system, giving them a lot of congressmen. And I believe California, sooner or later, is going to be Mexico. You see, if you go to California, they want all any immigrant to jump and come. By time, Mexican, they will be the majority, and they will vote to have California to go back to Mexico. <laughs> and I don't blame them. I mean, if I'm a Mexican, I would do the same. You know what I mean? This is what they want. You see, because they want to win the election, they don't care who is going to be the population. So they want to open the immigration for everybody. And then those who immigrate, they will vote for Democrat. So they will say to them, we are the one who give you the visa, you vote for us. You see, me myself, I am an immigrant, but I love America. And I will never vote for Democrat. Only those who hate America, they vote for Democrat. You can't really be a person who loves this country and you vote for Democrats. Look at them. They are against the army. They are against the police. They are against the flag. They burn our flag. They burn our own flag. What kind of people they are. If you wear a flag of USA in California, if you are a kid, if you send your kid wearing the USA flag, they kick you out from the school. You believe it? If you wear a flag of Egypt or Mexico or anything, it's okay. You're welcome. <laughs> Right? They are, they are mentally ill. Liberals are mentally ill. They are not normal. And they will pay the price for that. Look at their, look at their state. Their state is the most horrible state. Crimes, drugs, killing, kidnapping. I mean, I will never live in a state governed by liberals. Right now, as we speak, oh, tens of thousands of those who live in those states are leaving, leaving for good, selling their houses, selling their cars. They don't want to live in New York. Nobody want to live in this garbage city. Nobody will live in, in Chicago no more. I mean, how you can live in Chicago? You cannot live in a state controlled by liberals because the, sed the second they take over, mafia will take over, a drug dealer will take over, police have no authority. I mean, imagine, can you believe there's people they don't want police? <laughs> Why is that? I mean, this is the news. Is good news for who? If you say there's no police no more, this is a good news for who? What do you think, guys? For criminals. No police. <laughs> I mean, do you have to be a genius? defund the police don't hire police kick them out so what do you do if a thief he come to your house you will call who susu your girlfriend <laughs> they are literally stupid you know when i see those liberals honestly i say thank god thank god they are not around me they literally make me sick But as always, I say, stupidity is amazing. And I'm serious about that. Because sometimes you ask yourself, how a human being can be so stupid like this? No police. You see, regardless if you like the police or not, me, myself, I don't like government. I don't like anything about government. But we have to have government. We have to have police. Who said police are nice people? They are not, actually. A guy who come to you, you speak like he's because you have an authority now. Even he speak to you like he say, call you sir, etc. Give me your ID, sir. But you know that he have the authority to do whatever he want with you. He can accuse you of anything. 
So I don't like to talk to them, right? But we need them. And their job is very tough. So if they sometimes they are very aggressive, I mean, go and do their job for one day, you will see how, how, how disgusting their job is. Those people, nobody called them for something good. You know what I mean? You have a job where you are called only for ugly stuff. So why do you expect them to be nice? Why did not Jesus teach the Old Testament, love your enemy? No, he did, my friend. If you go in the Old Testament, you will see, you are not even allowed to take the, the ox of your, of your enemy. If you find a cow or a donkey of your enemy, you don't take it, you give it to him back. That is loving your enemy. But because you are shallow, you do not know the Old Testament, you think that this has never happened. Loving your enemy, there's a limit for it. If somebody came to me and he have a sword in my neck, am I going to say to him, Jesus says, love your enemy? Or I'm going to defend myself? So you're mixing things up. <clears throat> Always, by the way, I find that people who come here asking uh, questions about Christianity, they are copy-paste. And they are very shallow in knowledge. I guarantee you, you never read the Old Testament. If so, are you still against Islam? What does that mean, if so? If I love my enemy? Okay, I love the Muslims, I'm against Islam. Islam is ideology. Filthy ideology, teaching hate. So because I love the Muslims, I want them to be saved from the hate of Islam. Actually, any good person, he have a good, believe in anything good, even if he's a Christian, he should be against Islam. As an example, do you accept that a person have sex with the children in your town? Do you accept that a person, he take your daughter, she is six years old from her hand? Or you will be around, uh, like alarmed, sorry, and maybe heavily armed to defend your daughter? That is Islam. Do you accept that somebody marry your daughter and beat the hell of her? And your daughter call you, says, my husband is beating me. And then she called the police, the police, they say, we can do nothing about it because it's allowed for him to do it. This is Islam. So do you stand against Islam or what? So if you say, why you are against Islam? That is very stupid of you. You should be against Islam too. For Islam teaching to beat your mother, your daughter, your wife. Islam teach that women are half a brain. Islam teach that I can kill you if you don't agree with me. So we will have a bloodshed everywhere. Islam teach that if somebody don't go to the mosque for three days, we go after him when we kill him. That is Islam. So why are you are defending Islam? The question should be the opposite. Why a decent person don't attack Islam? Any person who will have a little decency, he shall not accept such a garbage religion. Do you accept the religion says a free for free, slave for slave? Women for women? So if you kill my slave, I kill your slave? Do you accept that? So if you are a white man, as in the time of Muhammad, the white men are the master, the Ethiopian are the slaves. So if I kill an Ethiopian slave of yours, the punishment is killing an Ethiopian slave of mine? Is that fair? So now we have two dead slaves, innocent, they did nothing. So, love your enemy is a total practice by attacking Islam. Anyone who loves the enemy, he should save them from fire. 
save them from the garbage of Muhammad. Anyway, guys, it's getting late here. Oh man, it's getting very late here. I was going to go and talk. How are you are we going to go live in the morning again? Uh, I think we cannot do it. So maybe we'll schedule for maybe late afternoon or night. So I want to say thank you guys for being here. I appreciate having you. And uh, I hope that uh, people learn. And remember, when you debate Muslims, don't do what other people do in the debate. Never agree with the terms of 15 minutes for him, 15 minutes for me. It's useless. I tried it before. It's useless. Muslims, you cannot debate them. Because they are game player. They have no decency. And they will change the topic in the speed of light. And at the same time, they will never answer your question. So such a format is a waste of time, will never get you anywhere, and will give them opportunity just to slander. Debate should be about we accomplishing a topic and get the full answers about it. Anything else is just a waste of time. So anyone will debate a Muslim. You should not allow such a format. The only format you should accept is a crossfire. Corner me, and I corner you. Bust me, and I will bust you. In the spot. People, they can talk in the same time. Now, if a person want to don't let that person talk at all, then there's no need for this debate to happen. Hang up on him and tell him bye-bye. We each, we give each other time to talk, but we will not change the topic before we finish what is in the hand. And this is not what they are doing in the debate we saw lately. So I want to say thank you, and until I see you again, may the Lord bless you, keep you in good health and worth, and we pray that uh, this uh, filthy coronavirus will go uh, away soon, and life will come back to normal even though it looks like it's going to take some time. But what we can do? Human beings sometimes need to be reminded how weak he is and that he is not God, that he is nothing. He think, human being, he thinks he is in control of the earth. Coronavirus made us remember how weak we are, that our science is just a stupid science, a little virus making all the scientists in the world dizzy. And now they are practicing on this virus what they think is going to be a medicine. After what? After tens of thousands of people die. That is our science. And to give you an example about our stupid science, we have something called cancer. It's killing millions of you every, every year. I mean, if this corona, coronavirus killed, uh, <laughs> I mean, I don't know, like maybe, maybe a million until now. We have cancer killing millions every year, every year. And until now, they cannot find a solution for it. This is how silly and shallow our science for those who worship science. Science cannot save you and will not save us. Actually, virus, the virus of Corona is way smarter than the scientists we have. Why? He changed himself every few days. <laughs> they start studying the virus they wake up after a week, they found that this virus changes nature. So they start from zero again. <laughs> so there's virus number nine, there's virus number 12, there's virus, all of them, they are coronavirus. Coronavirus change depends on the place. This is why you see sometimes some places, coronavirus is very aggressive. Other places is not, because it's not the same person, I mean, not the same kind of uh, structures. Very small virus, very small. And a human being is very, 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 uh, I don't know what to say, I mean, very much in disability. And do you finish with coronavirus? I assure you, another virus will come. And another virus will come. Because the biggest virus we have is us believing that we are powerful. 
That is our weakness. As long as we believe in that, the virus is always there. For the virus is within us. We, don't, we are not humble no more. We are not grateful no more. And we think we are in control of everything. We think because we are going to send someone to Mars, we are very powerful. But we cannot even control what is inside our body. A little tiny, very tiny virus can destroy us. So what the benefit of the power of the elephant of invisible creature can destroy the elephant? All the energy, all the weight, all the size is useless. And that's exactly what happened to the human being. Very greedy, very proud, and very stupid. We pray that we will not be stupid. We pray that we will be humble. We pray that we will not depend on ourselves, but the Lord will help us. And then we can fight and we can stand against all the risks we'll see in front of us. Those who fight evil by themselves, they will be destroyed by the evil because evil is very powerful. You cannot fight it by yourself. Those who trust God, have faith. Even, even the scientists, they say to you, that if somebody is a believer, he have way more chance to survive any kind of illness. Way better chance from somebody who is not a believer. Belief is very powerful. In the Messiah, he said, believe in a stone and you will heal. You don't mean to be pagan. They give you an example about how powerful faith can be. Belief is very very good help for us and in the moment like today we need to be believers for that will give us a very important strength we need thank you very much for being here and i will see you soon again christ is lord and everything else is false take care bye, -bye.